What's up guys, Justin here with TheSketchUpEssentials.com. In today's video, we're gonna check out an extension that gives you a better follow me tool inside of SketchUp. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so this extension is called Maj Follow Me. It's a free SketchUp extension that you can download from the Sketchication extension warehouse. And basically what it does is it creates profiles inside of SketchUp. So for example, let's say I was to just add a piece of this profile right here, it's gonna extrude this along a path. And so when we look at this, um, this comes with a few different built-in profiles, but then you can also create custom profiles in here as well. So the way that it works is when you install it, you get these different options. So the first option is the draw option. What that's gonna do is that's gonna give you the option for the type of follow me that you can use, the length and scale of your shape, and then your profile right here. And so you can see how this comes with some built-in profiles. Um, and then I've added a custom profile in here and you can add more, which we'll talk about in a minute. But for now, let's say we were to activate this like this. So we're just gonna click on okay. And then we're just gonna single click, move our mouse and then click again. And so notice how what I can do is I can click to add points. And then when I'm finally ready to be done, I can double click in order to finalize my shape. So you can see how it's taking that profile and it's extruding it along that path. And so let's say, for example, that we wanted to add a piece of base right here. Well, what we could do is we could click on this option. We could select the option for the baseboard. Then we'll click on OK. And then we can just click on these corners right here in order to place our piece of base. And so notice how what this is going to do when I finally double click in here is that's going to add the base in here and it's going to do a really good job of extruding around the corners like this. And so the cool thing about that is instead of messing around with the follow me tool and uh, trying to pick up all these different edges and then find a raw face over here to extrude along here, you can just create it as a profile. So you can create like a library of different profiles in here. And so one thing you might notice is this also has some hotkeys that you can use in order to flip the profile. So let's say for example, we wanted to add the roof cornice object right here. Well, right now, if I click in here and then click on this corner, this is gonna place this up above right? But if I tap the down arrow key, you can see how this is going to flip the direction that this is in here. You can also tap the tab key in order to flip it to the other side of your extrusion. So by using those keys, you can really quickly set the way that this is placed inside your model like this. All right, so this can also be a really nice function for following along with segmented curves like this rail right here, which I've created with the Maj rail extension. So if I was to come in here and add the handrail option right here, you can just click on the corners and you can just make this follow your segmented curve. So you can use this to custom place these, op these objects right here. Notice how if you accidentally click on the wrong place, you can hit the escape key to go back. But now I'm just gonna come in here and I'm just gonna double click on this point in order to place this rail. So if we look at this rail, you can see how this follows nicely along this curve. And so one option you might have noticed when you run this, there's an option here for directional. And so what that does is let's say we wanted to run our regular cornice right here. So if I was to take this and just turn the corner right here, we're going to run into an issue that we see a lot with the follow me tool, right? So if you were to extrude this, what this is gonna do is this is gonna extrude this around the corner, but see how it doesn't follow in here? So it's not maintaining its vertical um, its vertical direction. However, if we were to run this with the directional function, so directional right here, and then run the same thing with the cornice, what that's gonna do, is that's gonna bring this around this corner, but notice how it's maintaining that vertical orientation. So you can use it to follow along these like twisting shapes right here. So it's going to be a better option for more complex shapes like this. So now let's talk a little bit about creating custom profiles. So let's say that I wanted to create these two profiles right here. Well, what you would do is you've got an option in here for pick face. And so when you select the option for pick face, you want to select the face right here. And then you want to select whatever your base point is going to be for that face. So in this case, my base point is going to be the corner right here. And then I'm just going to set the second reference point to be this point right here. And then we're just going to call this custom or we'll call it cornice custom like this and click on OK. And so let's say that we have a room that's in here. 
So something like this, right? And so what we want to do is we want to take that and we want to turn the corner with it. So if we were to go into our options now for draw and click this drop down, notice how our custom cornice option is now in here. So now if I click on OK, I can use that profile that I added in order to quickly extrude that cornice detail in here. And so let's say we wanted to add a custom baseboard now. So what we want to do is we want to pick the face again, but we want to think about where our base point is, right? Because if you think about it, when you pick base, you're going to be selecting the floor um, or the bottom of the object in order to place it. So what we want to do for this is we want to click on this bottom corner and then click again. And we're just going to call this baseboard custom. And so think about your base points when you're creating these because whatever that point is, that's going to be your insertion point or the point that it's going to use in order to insert your object. So you want to make sure that this is going to insert based on this bottom location right here. But notice how we're able to quickly add that and that's in our library of stuff now. And so let's say we wanted to rename it. So let's say we wanted this to be something else. We could go to baseboard custom and we could call this baseboard underscore one. And then we'll just close out of this. So now if I go back, you can see how this is renamed to baseboard one. And then if we wanted to delete something out, we could just click on the delete face option and just pick something from the list. So let's say we wanted to delete the baseboard from a library. We just click on OK in order to do that. And now that's not going to be in here anymore. All right, so leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought about this extension. I will also link to some of the other Maj extensions on this video page right here. Um, big thank you to my supporters on Patreon for voting on this extension. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.